<laughs> Hello, I'm truly excited to be here today and share all the latest and greatest developments at Gatsby with each of you. If we haven't already met at a conference in the before time when we could all meet each other at a conference, if we haven't chatted on the Twitter sphere or GitHub, my name is Dustin Shaw, and I'm the VP of Product at Gatsby. Ultimately, my goal today is to share all the awesome work that the Gatsby team has been doing that meaningfully impacts your life and your life using Gatsby and the life of teams using, using Gatsby, building and collaborating. So how, how I plan to do that is I'll first take a step back, describe kind of how the modern web came to be, how Gatsby fits into the modern web, and ultimately how we're solving true problems of teams um, using Gatsby and building with Gatsby today. So first, I wanna take a stroll down memory lane. You know, nostalgia is a very powerful thing. And so when we think, you know, the IE5 days, hearkening back to the early eras of the web when we weren't even really sure what we were doing, I think of things like Yahoo. You know, Yahoo, the front page of the internet before Reddit was the front page of the internet. A series of links, and eventually they figured out, hey, I can monetize this thing and put a couple ads on this. GeoCities, where creators can come, share their little, you know, their little space of the web, get their kind of quirkiness out there, and show to all, you know, what the web can do and how the web can let you express yourself. And then one of my personal favorites, Space Jam. I think 96 or so. The site, still up, still alive and kicking. I visit it from time to time because why not? It's still there. So ultimately, the web of old was static. And so I'm using static here to mean fault tolerant HTML, styling, and images. And there is a lot of benefits of this static web. It always stays up, it scales. You know, uh, like I said with that Space Jam site, it's still up. It actually scores a 99 in Lighthouse, funny enough. And so when we look at this code, you know, this is static web. This is static assets. This is the actual code of the Space Jam website. So you look here, you see the title, you see some styles. You go a little bit further, you see this like body, these, uh, each of these HTML tags, and you see some of the early signs of e-commerce on the web where some developer in 1996 wrote, ads don't touch. <laughs> and so uh, ultimately this is the static web. And like each of you here, you know, there, are, there are a lot of benefits of the static web, but the web evolves. And so we must evolve as, as the web evolves. And how it evolved specifically is a little tool that you may have heard of called WordPress came along. And WordPress 8, pretty much the entire web. You know, when I was doing the slides, I thought, ah, WordPress is around 35% of the web. And I went and double checked. Nope, it's 40%. And so ultimately, tools like WordPress, the kind of CMS era, the CMS revolution, really transformed what the, what the web can do. And ultimately, it enabled this to happen because it enabled building a website without being an expert or without needing a team of experts. It basically gave creators control of owning their complete experience and putting their kind of their personality, their team, their website, you know, their brand out there in a way that is accessible and usable by a modern audience. You know, but I think we've lost sight of this. You know, what does the C in CMS stand for? It stands for content. And so what CMSs are best for is storing content, retrieving content, and showing content to your end users. And ultimately, the rise of this kind of decoupled and headless CMS, basically focusing on the content aspect of content management, has ushered in a new era, you know, collectively, jointly, you know, when you think of like decoupled CMS, when you think of JavaScript and APIs and markup, you think of, you know, collectively as the Jamstack, as Kyle was saying earlier. And, you know, ultimately along the way, including, you know, this era of CMS, including this era, uh, this era of decoupling, user expectations change. Rich web experiences became the norm and not the outlier. Your users' expectations evolved. Um, and, you know, what was a simple site like uh, Yahoo, you know, is no longer, you know, what users expect and, and the usable experience that, you know, your, your users are demanding. So when I think of, you know, what's the, what's the modern example of a rich web application, you know, how have these expectations changed? I think of Gmail, you know, when I think of, you know, what is the modern web app? How have expectations grown? When you compare and contrast, you know, Yahoo with Gmail, this is how it's changed. Users expect, you know, rich interactions. Users expect to be able to authenticate, to be able to see dynamic content and be able to retrieve it. And so uh, with tools like React, of course, which Gatsby leverages, um, it's enabled us to build these rich applications much more easy and much more easily and seamlessly than in the past. And so I always like to show a little bit of data. So West Elm's progressive web app saw a 15% increase an average time spent on the site, and a 9% lift in revenue per visit. So this is a measurable way in which 
creating an engaging experience, creating a rich web, a rich web application-like experience leads to increased conversion, leads to a better user experience, ultimately helps you make money at the end of the day. And so when I think of where Gatsby is positioned in this space and the value of Gatsby, I ultimately think of Gatsby as building on the shoulders of each of these giants and enabling you and your team to pluck the best parts of each of these experiences, ultimately creating your vision for what the modern web should be. So we think of static sites, Gatsby produces it. We think of a CMS, we, we enable it with focusing on the content, decoupling, and you know, there's a plugin for that. It's the Gatsby way of enabling you to stitch these together and create, a, and, and create a, rich, a rich web experience that your users love. And so again, ultimately, Gatsby builds upon each of these and enables you to kind of stand on the shoulders of all of these giants, hearkening back to these bygone eras and building the vision of the modern web. So ultimately, websites are built by teams of developers, marketers, and designers, uh, each of whom work collaboratively to create an experience that all of their users love collectively. And this is the really commonality, the hallmark of each of these eras, is that it's teams building these, it's teams collaborating, it's teams working with one another and shouting about all of the great work that they're delivering for their users. So developers, 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 you know, you'll get five, you know, you won't get the seven that Balmer did. This is an important piece and this is an area in which Gatsby focuses on to enable developers to have an excellent time using a tool like Gatsby. And ultimately, when I take a step back and I look as at how far we've come, the life of the front-end developer has truly never been better. You know, when we think of the modern front-end developer, really the modern front-end developer is owning the entire stack. You know, they're creating serverless functions. They are able to pluck data from wherever, stitch it together, and really the front-end developer today kind of feels like a wizard. But it's not exactly easy. You know, there's a, a big challenge in, you know, getting to this level of sophistication and creating and that kind of harnessing the power of the modern web. And so ultimately, a tool like Gatsby fits squarely into this space where it, it enables you, who is a developer, to be able to create something really sophisticated relatively easily with our plugin ecosystem, with our sane defaults, and with the kind of ultimate building blocks that we give you with Gatsby, building upon a foundation that enables you to build and create your vision of the modern web for your team. Marketers, 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 marketers. You know, so again, it's not just developers who are building sites. These sites are for a company. These sites are for your team. These sites are for your users. And the interplay between developers and marketers is a key one to keep top of mind. And this is squarely the challenge that we are trying to solve with Gatsby. And ultimately, these two camps don't always get along. You know, sometimes they can be regularly at odds. And ultimately, a tool like Gatsby is a way in which both camps can be happy. They both can choose the tools that help them be effective. And there isn't a downside, there isn't a cost to the end user. And this is squarely the space, you know, the quote unquote jam stack that Gatsby uh, and others uh, are solving. Ultimately, Gatsby is how we bring these two personas together. And end of the day, always focus on the user. This is how we bring these two disparate camps building a website without losing sense of, ultimately, it's our user who we're in service of, it's our user who's using our website, and it's our user who we can't disappoint and who we must not disappoint. This is our goal, you know, it seems kind of simple, but bringing developers and marketers together to create high performance websites, that is our vision, that is our dream, and every day, every week, every month, every year, we are making steady, measurable progress to make this reality even more true. How? Well, you know, I'm glad you asked. So, you know, ultimately, maybe, just maybe, marketers and developers can get along and create a website that their users love. And ultimately, when again, when we think and harken back as to the space that Gatsby is in, it's squarely in the space of the Jamstack, as Kyle said earlier. And Jamstack is a disruptive innovation that ultimately solves real problems. And I'd like to go into a little bit more detail and show some data on how it does solve these real problems. So again, Pinterest. Pinterest increased search engine traffic and signups by 15% when they reduced wait times by 40%. Ultimately, they made their website faster to load, their users increased traffic to their website and signed up more for Pinterest products. End of the day, by creating a website that your users are able to load more quickly, uh, engage with more quickly, and have a delightful experience, it impacts your bottom line and it improves your users' lives and it improves your revenues. The BBC discovered that they lost an additional 10% of users for every additional second that their website took to load. Time is money and companies like the BBC and Pinterest and some problems that the Jamstack purports to solve really are hearkening back to this, that end of the day, you serve, a user, you serve a faster website, your users will be more happy, and your users will sign up, 
and use the, use the great products that you're delivering to them. Speed matters to your user and speed matters to your bottom line. And what Gatsby does, what Gatsby is purporting to do is give you that performance by default. You know, it, it really enables you to be a performance wizard without necessarily understanding all of the intricacies. I really liked what Kyle said earlier when he was talking through, you know, how he loves seeing all the feedback and they're like, holy crap, these sites are amazing. And that is what Gatsby gives you. It enables you to deliver a great user experience, a fast user experience, um, a website that will, you know, ultimately generate you more revenue without needing to be a deep expert and, a deep, and have a deep understanding of the space. We're the performance experts, leverage Gatsby, and we give you performance by default. So to dive into a little bit of examples, you know, I think it's always nice to show and not just tell. Uh, this is from HTTP Archive, which is a way to kind of scrape the web and its key kind of performance characteristics, modern web characteristics, with a number of competing ways to kind of build for the web. So Gatsby, Drupal, WordPress, Next, and Next. And so this first one, performance. You'll notice that kind of outlier at the top, that is Gatsby. Because we enable you to be a performance expert, we, we enable true websites uh, built with Gatsby to uh, perform better than the, each of these other technologies. Similarly, accessibility. You'll see that little guy at the top. That is Gatsby, again, setting the standard for what the modern web can and should be for our end users. Best practices, you might be sensing a theme here. SEO, Gatsby is once more on top. And then PWA, progressive web app, rich web app experiences, you can see Gatsby is leading the standard here. Ultimately, the takeaway here is that Gatsby sites are better for the web and better for your user. When we look at each of these in aggregate, Gatsby tends to score five to 10% uh, improvements on each of these uh, characteristics of what is a great high-performing website that your users love. So use Gatsby, we'll do the hard stuff, and you can ship a great site to your end users. Well, you know, you might be asking yourself, this all sounds great, but what have you done for me lately? You know, how is Gatsby helping improve the lives of developers, 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 and marketers, marketers, marketers? So let me tell you. First, a few recent releases that we've enabled on open source. The first of which is the file system route API. This ultimately is a way in which you can um, create pages without needing to tap into the lower level APIs of Gatsby. So it enables you to get something pretty sophisticated, again, without necessarily needing to be a deep expert in Gatsby's internal APIs. Plugin options validation. This might seem not particularly glamorous, but I know each of us have fat fingered or typoed something before. You know, maybe we passed that wrong environment variable. And this, you know, you can think of Gatsby as kind of your helpful little butler kind of shining a light on the problem and helping you fix the problem, you know, with those typos that we all make. And then finally, Gatsby's docs. So this was a great kind of uh, internal effort to improve the overall understanding and hierarchy of the docs. So whether it's your first time or your hundredth time, we're trying to set you up for success so that you find the information that you need to be effective and that you need to build a great website for your end users. And that's just what we've done lately. Like, I'm not done, we're not done. We have so much more to show. I wanted to do a quick little poll. So a few days ago, I said, you know, hey, what do you think, what do you think we're launching at GatsbyConf on March 2nd? And I got some interesting replies. So one, I'm gonna say Gatsby 3. More deploy to options. And then Wes, uh, Wes as always. So serverless functions, hosted GraphQL, Gatsby plugin image, Gatsby hosted image server, server and new Gatsby socks. Well, yes. But actually, no. You know, here's what we're actually doing today. So as Kyle spoke about earlier, we really have six things that we're going to be shouting about, talking about, and demonstrating the value that these uh, deliver today and how each of them collectively help bring developers and marketers together. So Gatsby Image, I'll be showing us in a demo, uh, as will Lori Barth later. But this is a way in which, you know, you can get a modern, great image experience, again, without needing to understand the deep intricacies of the image API. Gatsby Cloud now has a best-in-class edge network so that you can use Gatsby Cloud for hosting your great websites and putting uh, a domain in front, of your, in front of your end users as well as an edge layer CDN. Gatsby version three, you know, I think back to when I joined Gatsby two years ago, we were just doing Gatsby two, how far we've come. And ultimately, I'm thrilled to be able to share some of the great improvements in build speed and local developer experience that we're enabling with Gatsby version three available today. And then next, when we think of the interplay between marketers and developers and how we can bring these two camps together, source plugins are the key way in which we enable 
these integrations to focus on what they do best, which is delivering great content. So whether it's Contentful or WordPress or Shopify, today, you know, you, a developer, can use each of these great plugins to help build a website, source with content to where the other factors of the website, the marketers, the designers, can each be effective. Uh, and you can, you can deliver an experience stitching it together with Gatsby and all of these great releases today. So I'll be covering these in a little bit of depth in just a second, but you can dive even deeper with people even closer to this space. So you'll have Lori doing a great talk on next-gen images, basically all the value that Gatsby gives to you by us being the performance experts so that you can serve images that your users love. We'll have Gatsby Cloud, uh, where the PM Joel Smith will be talking through our best-in-class edge network, which we're super excited to announce today. Gatsby V3, you'll have Leonard and Patrick uh, talking about all of the latest and greatest in the, in, the, in the latest version of the best-in-class web framework as measured by performance. And then finally, you'll have Jack and Shane talking through Shopify, a way in which you can begin to leverage an e-commerce experience for your users and which will score, score really well and which will help, help you make more money on the internet selling goods and services. So I'm a huge believer in showing and not just telling. You know? So I could shout about each of these you know, for the rest of my time, but ultimately I wanna show how what we're delivering today enables you to deliver real value to your end users. And how I'm gonna do that is a demo. Thank you, Kyle. It is demo time. And so what I'd like to do today is to show you how we're helping make this reality true. Show, not just tell. And what I'd like to do is specifically show how we're helping bring developers and marketers together with the example of our wedding website. So our wedding website is, of course, powered by Gatsby version 3 and Gatsby Cloud with its best-in-class edge network. Specifically, I'd like to show a couple of things today. First, I'd like to show the developer experience of using Gatsby and these updated improvements to Gatsby and Gatsby Cloud today. Next, I'd like to show the experience of the marketer and the content editor. And then finally, I'd like to show how we can bring all of these together with Gatsby Cloud. So as you can see, this is my wedding website for a wedding that I hope will occur someday. And so uh, as I navigate throughout this site, you can kind of see the hallmarks of what makes a Gatsby site better for the web. These hallmarks include excellent responsive images that are optimized for your browser and for your user so that you load only what you need when you need to load. We click through and pages load instantly, seamlessly. This is a better experience for the end user powered by Gatsby and its powerful prefetching. We click through. Uh, again, this is using Gatsby Image Next Generation. If you'd like a deeper dive on this, please check out Lori, Lori Barth's talk in just a moment. And then now I'd like to get into the actual developer experience of using Gatsby today. As mentioned, the interplay between the developer and the marketer is key. Each personas have different needs, requirements, and expectations. So first, I want to focus on the developer. So on the left-hand side, we have the Gatsby code that powers my website. On the right-hand side, we have a little bit of whimsy, a golden ticket that you can get when you RSVP to the wedding website. And so unfortunately, at this point, it's not Mrs. Maggie Shaw, it's the future Mrs. Maggie Shaw because our wedding is, has been postponed. And so what I'd like to do is I would like to make this change. I would like to leverage Gatsby Cloud, which is helpfully kind of setting up and wiring up GitHub and serving as kind of a CI CD server. So that's going to listen to changes, generate a, a deploy preview that I can then share for approval for awareness, and generally just to check the end-to-end -end solution to ensure it's working as I would expect. So what I'll do is I'll push this up to a branch. I'll make the, I'll make the commit message here, so chore, adding some copy. I'll write this, and then I'll push this up to this branch called the Golden Ticket branch. Next, I want to show how Gatsby Cloud is listening helpfully, waiting for this change, and it's helping me collaborate and coordinate between these disparate personas. So as you can see, Gatsby Cloud has helpfully already spun up a deploy preview. So this is going to be building out uh, in the background, and we'll come back to this. But first, I want to take a step back and again think of the interplay between the developer and that of the marketer. So let's shift into the marketing persona. And let me tell you, Maggie the marketer, she is a tough cookie. You know, ultimately, she wants to use the tools that enable her to be effective. Well, I want to use the tools that I use to be effective, like Gatsby. And so when we think of this interplay, ultimately people want to choose the tools that enable them to be maximally effective, and we ultimately all care about the same thing, which is in service of the end user. So on the left-hand side, we're triggering some copy changes. We're going to like get this form and function just right. We're going to publish this change, and then we'll see how Gatsby Cloud is listening and waiting just like it was for the developer. So now the content editor 
is now getting a content change, which is going to then trigger an incremental build. As you can see, this built just the minimum amount of pages that need to be rebuilt in three seconds, and now is deploying to our best-in-class edge network. And so what this is doing is this is deploying to the multiple points of presence throughout the globe, so that no matter where our users are, it's going to load a quick, snappy website pretty much immediately to all of them. Incremental build in three seconds, deployed to our edge layer CDN in 28 seconds. And so this ultimately is the experience that Gatsby Cloud is delivering. Marketers can make changes to content, and they can see that change appear pretty much immediately. Developers can make a change to code, and they can get a deploy preview that they can then use to collaborate. We'll come back to this. Ultimately, Gatsby Cloud is the destination where we focus on the user and enable these interplays. Ultimately, you can only improve what you can measure. And so I'd like to show some real user-focused metrics that, that demonstrate this end-user impact that we're having with Gatsby version 3 and Gatsby Cloud with the updated best-in-class edge network. So how I plan to do this is really an A-B comparison. On the left, A, we have my previous version of this wedding website, which is powered by Gatsby version 2 and a different CDN. And on the right, we have the updated version of the wedding website, which is powered by the latest and greatest in Gatsby version 3, particularly some great image improvements, which have an end user experience on noticeable performance metrics, and then as well as Gatsby Cloud, its best-in-class edge network. So this is all fine and dandy. You can kind of get a deep dive on each of these metrics. End of the day, this site loads more quickly for your end users. And so I'd like to show that with a visual demonstration. WebHS has this excellent feature in which you can get a video or a timeline view of what the end user experience actually is in loading and using your site. So what I'll do is I'll click through on the animated GIF and you can get a great illustration of what this looks like when you compare them side by side. So on the right, again, we have Gatsby version 3 and the updated version, and you can see that it loads in and clicks in in a nearly two seconds faster. And that's ultimately the end user experience that we're planning to deliver and that we are delivering with Gatsby version 3 and Gatsby Cloud today. So please, again, check this out. And this is a great way to show the real user improvements that we're delivering. So because you're smart, you may be asking yourself, well, Dustin, what about that developer workflow that we showed earlier? Whatever happened to that deploy preview? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'd like to get back into that. Helpfully, this whole time I've been demoing, Gatsby Cloud has been building out this pull request preview, this deploy preview, so that I can get a shareable URL to then validate the functionality that was present in that stage pull request. So it just took a short two minutes, and I've got a, a URL that I can share with my team and validate that functionality. So I'd like to do just that. You can see here that Gatsby Cloud has generated this URL. I can click on this URL, and I'll get a version of my website, kind of like a point in time artifact of what was present in that pull request with that exact change. So what I want to do is I actually want to walk through one of these flows, which is the RSVP form on the website. So before we dive too into it, I wanted to also take a step back. And those astute listeners out there, they've recognized that this title of this talk is what's new, but also what's coming. And I haven't announced what's coming. So today, I'd like to announce this one more thing. And that one more thing is serverless function support and early access. So Serverless functions are a great way to add dynamic functionality to your website, a way to tap into the power of, of the server without necessarily any meaningful benefit or downside to the static and fast nature of your Gatsby website. And so how I'd like to do this is I'd like to show what I've built out. So common use cases of serverless functions, you know, we've, we've seen the rise of serverless. This has given superpowers to the front-end developer. And so what I've done is I've built out an Airtable form where my guests can RSVP to our upcoming website. Of course, you can do things like send an SMS with Twilio, which I'll also be showing. You know, you can add a contact form. Really, the world's your oyster, and having the access and the power of serverless functions, as well as the scale, really unlocks new capabilities and kind of turns the static dynamic, which is an excellent way to give rich and improved functionality to your end users and kind of short circuit and get access to that dynamic functionality. So enough words, let's show. So. I'm going to RSVP to my upcoming wedding. Believe it or not, you know, I do think I'm actually going to go. So what this will do is this will look up with Airtable to see if there's a record or an entry found for this name, and it'll look up the rest of your guests. So as you can see, I'm already attending. I can also add my phone number, which you'll see in just a second what I'm actually going to do with this. So then we'll submit. 
which will add the phone number and will update any attendee status. And then we get a link to our golden ticket with the change that the developer made earlier that was staged in this pull request. So from an end-to-end -end experience, we validated the whole workflow and we, we can kind of deploy with confidence that what we're going to do is going to work in the way we expect and deliver the user functionality that our team needs. Now again, we'll validate this and we'll look up Airtable and you can see that myself and my fiance are indeed attending this wedding and we've added an updated view with the phone number. And so again, I'd like to dive one level deeper and kind of show what this looks like and give a glimpse of what we're thinking for this upcoming API. So on the left, the code, on the right, Postman, so that we can invoke this serverless function. So what I'm going to be showing is a Twilio function. I'm going to be using this in conjunction with the Airtable database so that when a user does add their phone number, I'll be able to send them updates as the wedding gets closer and closer, hopefully only good news. And so I contend that, you know, is it even a serverless function example if you're not using Twilio? No. So this is a classic example of the power of serverless functions and what it gives to your front-end developer and what it gives to your end user and the dynamic functionality you can get with a serverless function. So walking through this a bit, this is requiring Twilio. It's also requiring a form validation library. I'm wiring it up with some environment variables, which of course are stored on the server for secure access. And then I'm going to send an SMS with Twilio to the number and with the post body specified. What this looks like from a form and function standpoint is in the future, you'll have an API folder and then any, any, and then any file in this folder is going to be assumed to be a serverless function and when deployed with Gatsby Cloud will be created so that you can get a dynamic backend API without needing a DevOps team or without needing a series of experts. So to show this all wired up and working just so, We'll now validate with our Postman request. We'll send this up, and what you'll see in just one second is the SMS coming through via Twilio and Gatsby Cloud Functions. So thank you truly for attending GatsbyConf today. I hope you enjoyed, and I'm confident that all of these, uh, all of what we showed will deliver real user value. If you'd like early access to functions and like to learn more, please check out gatsbyjs.com forward slash functions. Thanks for tuning into my demo. And now I'd like to end on one closing note. There are so few silver bullets in tech, and you should always be wary of those selling you them. Gatsby and the Jamstack, we're still in the early adopter phase. You know, we are disrupting these industry stalwarts, and we can truly not only just say, but we can show that we're building a, a better web for the end user. So what I hope I've shown today is that we are focusing on you, the developer, 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 and the team composed of developers and marketers working together without losing sight of who truly matters, the end user. Ultimately, we are not done. We're just beginning. Join us and let's build a better web for all.